Having served with the US Army since the 80s, the M1 Abrams MBT is getting a bit long in the tooth. A plethora of variants and upgrades have been made for it over the years, and its weight has increased rather dramatically. It is still an incredibly potent vehicle, but it's due for replacement. While that replacement is under development though, stop gaps will be needed. Many of you have no doubt heard about this, the next generation Abrams concept, made by General Dynamics. People have already started to speculate about it, what features it might have, when it will go into service, stuff like that. And since it'll be a couple months until we know for sure, I thought I'd join in on the fun. Now to be clear, there's no guarantee this will actually be adopted. It's being shown off at AUSA, but that doesn't mean the army has shown interest in it. Trust me, I wish that were the case. A lot of very cool things have been shown off there that are never used. And yes, I will find a way to shoehorn the Ares into as many videos as possible. Now let's get started. Kicking off with probably the most striking change, a massive remote weapon station has been added to the middle of the turret. At first I thought this was the LW-25, a lightweight variant of the Bushmaster cannon. It's actually a bit more interesting than that. As we can gather from more detailed shots, this is most likely the M230LF, a lighter version of the Apache's gun. Many think this is for use against drones, and that would seem likely, given that the gun is advertised with proximity-fused ammunition. For use against infantry and light vehicles, it also has a high-explosive dual-purpose round. If this concept and the EMBT are anything to go off of, remote-controlled cannons like this might become very common. Drones obviously pose a serious threat, so it makes sense that counters would become widespread. Next is the new turret. Compared to the current M1 turret, it's obviously a lot more low profile. It reminds me a lot of the K1 and K2. Anyway, the primary benefit of this is that it reduces weight considerably, but it doesn't compromise protection. In fact, it makes the turret a little harder to hit. Weight reduction seems to be a fairly large priority for this upgrade, which makes sense. The army has been looking to reduce the M1's weight for quite some time, as it creates a lot of headaches. Not only does it increase wear on components, but it also makes the M1 more difficult to recover and transport. Similar to the XM8, it looks like it has a chain cover system for the gun, which affords it more gun depression. And speaking of the gun, you may have noticed it's a bit different. This isn't the typical M256. It almost certainly looks to be the 120mm XM360 cannon, which is both interesting and odd. The XM360 cannon was developed to give Abrams-style firepower to light vehicles, specifically, the mounted combat system that was part of the FCS program. Performance-wise, it is pretty much identical to the M256, but it is much lighter, so that would fit with the theme of weight reduction but it is a strange choice. Another variant of the gun, XM360E1, was developed specifically for the M1. It offers higher performance as well, so I'm not sure why they aren't using it. It's also possible that it is an XM360E1, just with the pepper pot muzzle break, but that seems like an unnecessary change. I reckon most people will see this choice as a poor one, what with the T14 existing and all. But there's one thing that's important to remember. At this point, the T-14 is a paper tiger. Russia is still stuck using relatively old vehicles. Things like T-80Us, older T-72Bs, and T-90As. As a stopgap solution, the XM360 is perfectly fine. There's no real way to tell, but I'm willing to bet it has an autoloader as well. More specifically, the Abrams autoloader by Maget. Not only has it already been tested in the M1, but it also has a high rate of fire, and allows the human loader to be retained. I think the new M1 will keep the 4-man crew, but the 4th guy won't really act as a loader, more of a systems operator. But that's all pure speculation on my part. Let's move back to the things we can see. The turret is obviously mounting the Trophy Active Protection System, which is to be expected. M1A2Cs have already been using it, and in this day and age, an APS is pretty much a must-have. Two Pazio sites from Safran Optics are also visible, one for the gunner and one for the commander. This is the same site used on the MPF and EBRC Jaguar. Each site is fully stabilized, equipped with thermal imagers, has a laser rangefinder, and has a panoramic scan mode. As for these antennas here, I think they may be part of some gunshot sensor system, but I'm not entirely sure. On the GDLS website, they have a bunch of generic marketing stuff like this. Come on guys, legend mode? Anyway, one stood out to me. It says Silent Strike. They will never hear us coming. Now this is a bit more striking than the other videos. It makes me wonder what they meant by it, and there are a few possibilities. It could simply be referring to how quiet M1s are thanks to the turbine, but that isn't exactly new. There are a few other options, but they're not very likely. It could be referencing four rubber tracks, or a hybrid power pack. The former is more realistic, but we'll have to wait to find out. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and I'll see you on the next one.